Hi, so I was asked to go over making um, carbon and graphenic structures using this stuff, ordinary table sugar. It's actually quite amazing, to be honest. Now, this is pulled from a paper, actually not one paper, a, a few papers. So if you put um, blown sugar graphene into a Google Scholar search, you'll turn up lots of papers that talk about this. Uh, and they use two main materials, that is the sugar and a blowing agent. Now... There are two stages to it. The first stage is to heat the whole thing up slowly to 250 degrees centigrade. That forms uh, melanoidin, and that's the brown sticky stuff that you see. It goes carbonized, partially black, and you get this foam out of it as long as you use a foaming agent that um, degenerates at that level, uh, at 250 degrees, or around about 250 degrees. And a really good chemical for that is ammonium chloride. So essentially what you do is you mix the sugar with ammonium chloride at a 50-50 ratio, so equal weights. Stick it in something at two, that's going to heat up to 250 degrees centigrade, pretty much your oven. And it will go that sticky brown caramel reaction that you recognise, forming that biopolymer. The ammonium chloride will break down to ammonia and hydrochloric acid and bubble out of that mass, creating a foam. Once that foam is created, what you need to do is raise the temperature to graphitize it. So it's a two-stage process. Now, very often in the papers, you see it done in a one stage. We were going to do a two-stage, just so that we can uh, use the equipment that we've got in a way that I think other people will be able to replicate quite easily. Now, a word of warning, obviously, that breakdown, as I just mentioned, forms ammonia and hydrochloric acid. Now, in small amounts, it's not really a problem. So if you're using a gram or two, it's not something to worry about. If you're using a couple of kilos, that's going to be an awful lot of gas. So you do need to take precautions against that. Probably even if you're working up towards 10 grams or so, you need to start thinking about those gases that are being given off as part of that foaming process. Now, ammonium chloride is the major one that's used in pretty much all of the papers. Sometimes they use ammonium carbonate, but it's in, in conjunction with ammonium chloride. And they use that because it's a really good blowing agent at that temperature. It breaks down into a gas and helps form those bubbles and form that foam. And that's why it's been used. I don't know if there are any other things, because I've only ever used that myself, to be honest. And it works so well, I haven't even bothered. But it's stunningly simple to do. Now, you need to choose some kind of weight. So I'm going to do 10 grams, as it happens. So weigh out 10 grams of my sugar. I don't know if that's 10 grams. Sorry. And then 10 grams of my ammonium chloride. And then what I need to do is get them into intimate contact, because this works best if the thing is dry and they've been well mixed together. And obviously what I've got here is a mortar and pestle, and you just go around them with your mortar and pestle, grinding them up together a little bit. The more time you spend grinding that, the better. Get them into nice intimate contact. And then we're going to remember heat it only to 250 degrees, so glass is going to be fine. I'm going to stick that in the glass and then stick it in the oven. So let me grind that a little bit and get back to you. Okay, so here's my ground um, sugar and ammonium chloride, and it's in this little glass beaker. And I'm going to put it in here, and this is my vacuum drying oven. This will go up to about 300 degrees centigrade, so 250 is not a challenge for it. But it raises the temperature slowly, and that's one of the key things, apparently. One of the important things is to raise that by about 4 degrees a minute, or something like that. So you have to have the temperature raised slowly. You can't just bung it into a hot oven and hope you get a good result. You need to raise the temperature slowly, and that's why I'm using this, because I can raise that temperature uh, in a nice, even way, around about 4 degrees a minute. And all you do is pop it in there, and turn that oven on. 
and we give that some time. Now obviously at 4 degrees a minute, 250 degrees centigrade, it's going to be a while. So let's let that cook. So in the paper it said round about 250, so it's at 248 now and it's taken a couple of hours to get there, which is probably good because like I say it had to be 4 degrees uh, a minute, more or less. So if we open that up, now we can see what we've got. Oh, fascinating. I've obviously got the heat glove on. But there you go, we can see that we've got actually quite a nice carbon foam. Okay, so I've taken the carbon foam out of the glass uh, and it's actually really quite lightweight. So um, that bit was exactly what the paper said to do, really. I mean, um, it did talk about an inert atmosphere, but I didn't do that, obviously. I just did it in air and it seems to have worked just fine. So what we now need to do is the second part of the paper. Now, the other, lots of other papers talk about rising it to um, 1350 degrees. I did read one paper that talked about a thousand degrees. They're quite high temperatures, obviously. I'm going to try it at 800 degrees, so I am varying a bit from the paper here. Now, lots of the papers do it in inert atmospheres, usually with the argon. That's complete not a pain. So what we're going to do is the usual trick of a reduced oxygen atmosphere. Because I think that the argon is there just to remove the oxygen to stop the carbon burning away. Because this is a reticulated carbon foam at the moment, and what we want to do is uh, graphitize it. Now the graphitization happens only at heat, and I'm curious to see whether that graphitization, given that we've got this bubble-like structure, will happen at 800 degrees centigrade. Now I've tested this already, and it's completely non-conductive. So if we get any kind of conductivity out of that, we should be get, get graphitization. So the plan is to stick that in there, put the lid on, drill the hole, and put a bit of carbon briquettes in there. So the carbon briquettes are the bits that burn, uh, and they're sacrificial, so we'll have a reduced oxygen atmosphere. Anyway, that's all I'm going to do is, like I say, pop that in there, put some carbon on top, stick it in the kiln, 800 degrees centigrade, and see what we get. Okay, so we're giving this a go, remember. It's had 800 degrees centigrade for an hour, and I've let it cool down a little bit, but we can take it out, and we need to let it cool before we remove it, because if we remove it while it's still hot, then it'll just burn away. So I'll pop it there, we'll let it cool, and we'll take it out. Okay, I'm a, a bit smugly pleased as it happens, because here it is, it's come out of the kiln, and you can see it's a nice shiny graphite color, actually. Um, the other papers that I've read, some of them reported that it had a spongy feel. This is actually quite hard, so it's obviously different to what was done before. Uh, I've tested its conductivity, and actually it's quite amazing. If I just rest them on there about three centimetres apart, then I get a resistivity of 46 ohms. So we have now a reticulated graphenic foam made from sugar and ammonium chloride, and that's a step-by-step -step process on how to do it. Now obviously, having made that, the next thing to do is make a supercapacitor out of it and see how that material actually performs. But those are the steps I took to make this graphenic carbon foam out of sugar using a kiln. So I hope that was of interest, uh, and I hope it answered questions that I've been asked on how to make these foams out of ordinary table sugar. And thank you very much for watching.